Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about the uh, 1989 uh, Batman film. Uh, the first of four films. Uh, I actually have it twice. Uh, once here. Um, I didn't get the uh, other Blu-ray, which seems to not have only a few more special features, but I don't know. They didn't seem to be enticing to me to the degree of wanting to rebuy it and also of course in this Batman anthology set and I of course have it on DVD and yeah this is just basically the same thing as this version but it's uh, when I get uh, I got all the films from this set um, or that set Yes, I will be going through all four of uh, these films. Uh, the first big films I saw of Batman, um, of course, as mentioned last time, the 1966 uh, TV show is what got me into Batman. I then saw this film. It was some years until I saw the... Uh, um, 1966 uh, film, but uh, in terms of yeah, feature-length films, this was the first one I saw, and uh, of course it was quite serious, not as goofy as the 66 uh, uh, show, and uh, this was more towards the direction that, you know, I guess I could say I wanted Batman to be, essentially. Um, you know, uh, growing up, uh, you know, enjoying the 66 show, and then also enjoying these films. At a young age, I also watched, uh, or got the comic books, and read some series, or some of the dark comics of the 90s, and, you know, the serious stuff is what I like, and what a lot of people like. Um, of course, the campiness is always, uh, always fun to watch, um, but, uh, you know, this film you know, has Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Um, for a lot of people, he still is the Joker. Nobody has ever played the Joker better than him. Uh, I think I've expressed who my favorite Joker is, but, you know, he's very good. He was very good in this film. Uh, film. Uh, Michael Keaton is Bruce Wayne Batman. Um, I think he does a quite a good job, though, if there's anything about... Uh, this film, and perhaps even, I guess, the two Burton films he directed, uh, it's he focused more on the villains more than, say, you know, Bruce Wayne or Batman. Um, Batman uh, sort of seems to take a bit of a backseat, um, in this film at least. Um, you know, Joker is uh, more focused, essentially. He, he, we see more of him. Um, granted, it's Jack Nicholson, um, but uh, still, you know, it's called the film is Batman. Uh, I would have liked to have seen a little more of Batman, uh, Bruce Wayne. Um, Michael Keaton does a very good job. Um, I have heard some people um, say they think his version is a bit stiff at times. Like, as Bruce Wayne, like, as Batman, he's good, but his Bruce Wayne is a bit... Um, stiff at times, and I rewatched uh, this film, of course, uh, and I think I could kind of understand at, at times where the stiffness comes from. I think I can see it too. Um, it's but I think it's with uh, Kim Basinger, I would say, and also I, I just I don't know. I've I think that's something I'm not too fond of with this film is Kim Basinger. Uh, she's a fine actress in her own right, but, you know, she screams quite a bit. Now, of course, what she's... It, Vicky Vale is involved with, with this film, with the Joker and Batman and getting into danger quite a bit, you know, yeah, screaming and everything would be quite appropriate. However, I think it's... 
how often she screams is what kind of gets me annoyed. That's something that I've always found, even as a kid, I didn't like. I mean, I understood why she's screaming, but I just... It always bugged me that she didn't dial it back. And uh, Tim Burton, I guess, never told her to dial it back either. Um, or maybe he uh, encouraged her, I don't know. It's never really revealed in any of the documentaries on this Blu-ray or even any of the anything else you could get out of this. Uh, no explanation there. Um, and so for that, for me, that's always been sort of something that's a bit of a downer. Uh, that she's a big prominent part of the film, but she screams quite often, and it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, we get it. You're scared, understandably, but sometimes it's just like she. It seems like she's screaming just to scream. Uh, I just, uh, yeah, I just kind of got on my nerves. Um, I, I think her chemistry with Michael Keaton isn't quite there. I don't totally believe it so much, I guess you could say. It's just, it's fine for what it is, um, I guess, of the time. But, you know, when you also realize, like, um, like Sean Young was going to be Vicky Vale until she broke her leg, and, you know, they couldn't at all wait until she got completely better so she could play the part. Uh, it's understandable why she was replaced, but, yeah, then... The, Something about Sean Young that one could, uh, I guess one could really uh, say about Batman and her. I'll leave that for the next video. Um, but anyway, I want to mostly focus on my experience with this film. Uh, of course, in the 90s, watching this film, I, of course, really loved it. Um, of the four films, this was my favorite. Uh, uh, also, the Joker is in it, and he's my favorite Batman villain. I think he and Nicholson did a great job. I think Keaton does a good job, too, as Batman. I think if there's anything with weakness, like with the stiffness, aside from the uh, one, could say, of chemistry with like with um, Kim Basinger, like, well, I don't necessarily, I'm not, too fond of that, but, or explain why, I think for me, um, it could also be down to the writing, now there were various writers on the film, got rewritten quite a bit, and some stuff was added after the writers, which isn't totally out of the ordinary for uh, studio films, you know, writers come and go, and sometimes some writers will do rewrites for a film that, you know, will never get credit for, and you will may never know who wrote what until later on, years down the line. And some stuff that people have often pointed out, which I think as time goes on, like that's kind of interesting. Like how, like how Jack Napier, you know, of course the Joker, kills Bruce Wayne's parents. A lot of people, you know, hate that. They hate that it's not Joe Chill. They hate that they changed it to where the guy who actually killed Bruce Wayne's parents that would eventually lead him to be Batman is replaced by the Joker. And they think that that revenge aspect is not good for Batman. Like, it should have been stricken away at some point, you know, as in being Batman. But for the context of the film, it works. It works well. Does that mean as I rewatch it every time? You know, of course as my knowledge of Batman with reading the comics would grow, and we're going back, uh, sure, that can be a bit of annoying if one's going to be a uh, purist, a uh, Batman purist. And I think, if anything, then pretty much every show and film would then be, you'd have a problem with it. Because, honestly, whatever one's... Oh, sorry. When it, anything of what one's thoughts of the character of Batman and how it should be portrayed... Uh, will always be different. Mine is different from, no doubt, yours. We may have similar uh, thoughts on maybe who is the best Batman, Bruce Wayne, Joker, so on and so forth. 
And, you know, that's fine. But then, of course, even with that, one could think, while they did the best job and out of everybody who has ever played the character of Batman or of Joker or whoever, as you're talking about, maybe they thought the film could have been better. Like, got the great, the best actor in the part, they gave the best performance that's ever been done with the character, but we just still have yet to see, like, the best Batman film. And everybody is different, obviously. Uh, this film is a classic. I, even though, yes, I like the Dark Knight trilogy better, I still love this film. Even though, yes, again, Kim Basinger isn't my favorite of the film, uh, the chemistry she and Michael Keaton have, I don't think, is the greatest. Um, and I think also, if there's anything wrong with the writing, it probably is to the fact that they rewrote it quite a bit. Um, and while I myself don't uh, have a problem with Jack Napier uh, killing Bruce Wayne's parents, again, I can see why there are people who are annoyed by that. They don't like that. With the film and how it's used in the context of the film, it kind of makes, it does make sense. It does make some amount of sense. Though, of course, people do complain about also Alfred bringing Kim Basinger or Vicki Vale down to the, I don't know why I keep not calling her by her name at this point, but yeah, Vicki Vale down to the Batcave. I'm like, how oh, that would really be the end of Alfred's working at Wayne Manor. Like, that's just a big no. <laughs> um, but, you know, she's also figured out essentially who. Bruce Wayne is, or who Batman is, whatever, you know, she's followed him, the friend Alexander Knox, she, uh, you know, uh, finds him very curious, and then she finds out about his traumatic past, and then seems to put two and two a get together as the film goes on, and he even tries to, even try to say that, uh, at, be at her at her place that he's Batman and he's trying like he wants to be with her and I think that's something that's quite extraordinary about you know that Bruce Wayne does want a normal life but he knows being Batman there's some complications with that because you know he he doesn't want to jeopardize anybody he loves in his life like, say, a spouse, and jeopardize them on the off chance that his enemies will figure out who Batman is. Oh, it's Bruce Wayne. Oh, and he's married. Use that against him. You know, that's just uh, something that uh, he doesn't necessarily want to risk, and that's understandable, because what he does is quite dangerous. When You know, yeah, during the day he's running his uh, company, but at night he's often prowling the streets um and for the first serious incarnation of all that uh this film is incredible it's fantastic i really love it um again uh, yeah uh, some problems here and there i guess as time goes on i guess you could say and you start to look at it and i've you know heard so many people praise this film and you know and rightfully so and then I've heard some people critique it, obviously, because, you know, no film is perfect. Every film, uh, to a degree, does have uh, problems, regardless of how small they may be. There are some little things, but, you know, if the whole film itself is uh, fantastic and good, uh, that shouldn't matter in the, honestly, uh, you know... Uh, any gripes I have, you know, when I'm watching this film, you know, with, like, Vicky Vale screaming so much, I'm immersed in the film that I'm able to overlook that. It's only when I really start to think about it, certain things individually and think about them, that's when I, like, if there's any problem with it, I think that's, like, one thing. Vicky Vale screams a bit too much for... For me, for my liking, um, I've often thought that. I understand that the situation she is in is quite dangerous and uh, downright frightening to anybody not uh, 
going to be, you know, in the midst of that fight willingly. So, uh, yeah, uh, being in danger with the Joker and Batman, that's just, yeah, understandably that she's going to scream here and there. But uh, it's just, I think, the, how frequent it seems to be. That's my... Uh, that's just my, my uh, part of the film that I'm just not too fond of. Uh, Michael Keaton again does a fine job, um, and rewatching it and hearing some people think he's a bit stiff at times as Bruce Wayne. You know, I just wanted to see if is that true and. I think it kind of is at times, but I don't think that's Michael Keaton's fault. I think that's, again, I'm not too fond of the chemistry he and Kim Basinger have, so for me, I think that's where I really see it. Others could say it could be also the writing. You know, may not be as strong as it probably should be. You know, there are incarnations of the script uh, that you can find online that, you know, had they done just what the original script was and not deviated too much from it, perhaps some who may critique it here and there for certain aspects would probably, you know, not critique it that much uh, for certain things, like some of the choices of, like, writing, like, the Joker being Batman's, the parent, who murdered his parents, the guy who murdered Bat, uh, Bruce Wayne's parents. Um, that's a big thing that a lot of people I know dislike quite a bit. Um, this film also is very comic book-like, you know, and I think with that aspect, Tim Burton was tr truly uh, fantastic at, you know, his gothic, like, style of filmmaking anyway, works for Batman. Works for a Batman movie because, you know, he is, he has made very dark films throughout his career. And, uh, this is a fantastic, uh, look at that sort of uh, 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 look of a, com of a comic book. You know, the comic book uh, look is very present in this film. You know, in the more realistic uh, world, you have like Christopher Nolan's. In the more comic book world, you get, uh, uh, yeah, you know, Tim Burton's uh, world of Batman. And uh, then there's sort of like a cross between with uh, Ben Affleck's Batman. His it's more like a realistic looking Batman combined with a comic book element. Sort of like a mishmash of both of those worlds. Um, you know, Michael Keaton. Uh, a lot of people didn't think he could ever be Batman because you know, Mr. Mom is Batman. No. no. And also he did, you know, Beetlejuice uh, the year before Batman. So even though he had worked with Tim Burton before, and, you know, Beetlejuice is also a fairly dark film, but that film's also, again, a comedy. Though not as, I guess, perhaps as goofy as, say, uh, Mr. Mom. You know, uh, this... Uh, you know, this film really helped uh, people look at Michael Keaton differently in, in that he's more than just uh, uh, a comedic actor. I mean, yeah, he has uh, an occasional quip or two with Alfred that you can uh, chuckle at, laugh at, whatever, if, however funny you might think some of their interactions are um, in this film, and also Batman Returns. Uh, this uh, film is uh, is just fantastic. Um, Danny Elfman's score is also incredible. Um, the theme song for this is so iconic and beloved, rightfully so. And uh, I think also, you know, the the soundtrack that Prince made is also incredible. I mean, I have the soundtrack, uh, and that's really fun to listen to. Um, yeah, that's just a soundtrack that's 
always enjoyable to listen to, um, along with the score. Uh, but this is a film that's just something that I've always loved since I was a kid. I still love to this day. Regardless of certain things, when I look at uh, look at as the certain aspects individually, you know, certain things, yeah, could have been better. But you know, hey, it's an incredible film. It was a huge success in uh, 1989, obviously. And this film is just a classic. It's a classic for. For so many years, like ever since I guess you could say since it came out, and uh, yeah, I just I've just always loved this film. Uh, Nicholson did a great job. Keaton did a great job. Basinger, well, I'm not too fond of her screaming at certain points in the film. Like I think she kind of overdoes it. Um, she does a fine job too. Um, I don't know. And also, perhaps for the chemistry between her and Michael Keaton, maybe it's also the writing. Maybe it could have been... Maybe they shouldn't have had so many writers rewrite the film. Um, maybe on that aspect, I would have enjoyed that more. But, you know, the film is so really fantastic that watching the movie, if I don't really pay too much attention to the something like that. I'm able to really just really get into it. It's really fun uh, to watch. Um, the, the film is just uh, just fantastic. You know, Tim Burton uh, became even more popular with this film and uh, really opened more doors for him than uh, you know, previously he had just done Pee-wee's Big Adventure, which was his first film, and then, you know, Beetlejuice. Uh, and, uh, this film is just something that he really put his stamp on. He put a stamp on the comic book film genre and really helped uh, uh, elevate it, basically, to a degree that, you know, some of the other comic book films, you know, just, you know, that made people look at them differently now. Um, and then that's something that you could see later on with, like, this franchise and other franchises. People would later look at comic book films differently. People looked at them differently with the first Superman. People looked at, uh, things differently with this film, uh, with comic book movies, and so, this is a huge movie, you know, regardless if, if you love, uh, the Dark Knight trilogy the best, or these films the best, or the Adam West show for the best, or whatever Batman, uh, film you love the best, uh, you can't deny that this is truly important, it's a, an important movie to, for the character, and it's just so incredible, and I, I really love it. It's I love revisiting this film every so often. Um, and with that, uh, I'll just uh, leave you with it. Uh, what do you think about this film? Do you enjoy it? Do you dislike it? Do you love it? Um, do you even hate it, I guess? I don't know anybody who's actually hated it. Um, but hey, maybe there is somebody. Uh, what do you think about this film? Do you, uh, you know, is it your favorite Batman movie? Uh, is Michael Keaton your favorite Batman? Bruce Wayne? Is Jack Nicholson your favorite Joker? Or are others your favorites? Um, let me know if you would like, and, uh, yeah. I will, uh, Uh, see you all next time. Hope you all have a great day, great weekend, and a great week.